Hey, so maybe you're an Elon Musk or SpaceX fan and you think Starship is fun to watch. But Starship isn't just fun to watch. Starship matters. And I'm going to show you why. Are you ready for the Starship money shot? If you're an Elon Musk fan like me, the best part is no part. The best process is no process. Be less wrong. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on right now with Tesla and SpaceX and more. One, zero. SpaceX's Crew Dragon got a lot of attention recently. And I understand, delivering four astronauts to the International Space Station seems like a big deal. It is important, but Starship is a thousand times more important than Crew Dragon. Before we get into it, I'd like to thank Bradford Ferguson of Halter Ferguson Financial and all my Patreon supporters for helping this channel grow. Patreon supporters get early access to some of my videos and some exclusive content. So Starship is a thousand times more important, or maybe it's just a hundred times more important. I think it's a thousand times. And I'm going to tell you why. Are you ready? Let's go. This is all about money. The space industry, both government and commercial, has always struggled with the high cost of launching cargo and people into orbit. SpaceX has been massively successful at lowering launch costs, but Starship is going to lower these costs a lot more. It's stunning. Launch cost is generally measured in dollars per kilogram to certain levels of orbit, typically low Earth orbit. A kilogram is 2.2 pounds, by the way. Start, two, one, boost for ignition, and liftoff of the space shuttle Discovery, returning to the space station, paving the way for future missions beyond. In the early 1980s, it cost nearly $100,000 a kilogram for the space shuttle to launch cargo into low Earth orbit. By the mid-1990s, that cost had come down to maybe $25,000 a kilogram for that payload. Once SpaceX came on the scene, those costs started dropping. Falcon 1 brought the cost down below $10,000 a kilogram. So that's a 10x reduction from the early days of space shuttle and less than half the cost of the later space shuttle. Falcon 9 was another big step bringing the cost of getting payloads into orbit to below $2,000 a kilogram. Initially, that happened by improving efficiencies in various ways, and later, by reusing boosters, it lowered the cost even further. Reusing orbital rocket boosters saves a lot of money. A, a critical distinction here. A lot of people compare what SpaceX is doing and say, well, Blue Origin is landing rockets too. Blue Origin is landing a rocket that goes straight up and comes straight down. It doesn't go sideways. The Falcon 9 booster launches the second stage up some number of miles, 40, 50, 60 miles up in the air. But it, more importantly, it starts going sideways relative to the Earth because in order to get into orbit, it's not how high you go. It's how fast you go sideways. So the Falcon 9 booster will go tens or hundreds of miles, usually east, reaching speeds 10 times the speed of sound, going up above the atmosphere, and then it has to come back into the atmosphere, survive re-entry, and then land on a very small spot. This is far more challenging than what Blue Origin's been doing with New Shepard. And no one else has even tried to do what SpaceX is doing. No one is close. Reusing orbital rocket boosters saves a lot of money. Suppose a booster costs $50 million to build, which is about the cost of a Falcon 9 booster. If you can reuse that booster 10 times, you get to spread that $50 million cost over those 10 launches, and it works out to $5 million a launch. There's some cost for rehabbing the rocket, but it ends up costing you $5 million or maybe $6 million a launch instead of $50 million a launch. That's a lot of savings. That really helps bring the cost down. 
for SpaceX internally for launches like Starlink, they may have the cost per kilogram down to $1,000 a kilogram by now. It's not clear. So we've been seeing significant reductions in launch costs, and it's been fast, but still on a gradual curve. Starship is different. Starship is a step change in the cost of launching payloads to orbit. The cost of it's important to realize here that Starship is planned to deliver 100 tons or more of payload into low Earth orbit. 100 metric tons is 100,000 kilograms. So if, as Elon says, it's going to cost $2 million a launch for Starship, $2 million divided by 100,000 kilograms works out to $20 per kilogram. That is a monster drop from the cost of launching payloads into orbit with Falcon 9. But wait, there's more. Elon said in a recent tweet he thinks they're going to be able to get launch costs down, marginal cost, down below a $1 million a launch and for payloads of more than 100 tons. So to be clear, we're talking about less than a million dollars to launch more than 100 tons into low Earth orbit. That means the cost is less than $10 per kilogram to get into orbit, which is more than 100 times better than the $2,000 per kilogram cost of Falcon 9. Even if Falcon 9 has got internal launch costs down below $1,000 a kilogram, this is still 100 times better, one one hundredth the cost. Let's get a sense of the scale of this improvement. It's not twice as good. It's not five times as good. It's not 10 times as good, 20 times as good, 50 times as good. As good. It's 100 times as good or better. This is a monster, monster achievement. Let's think about this again. Only 25 years ago, it cost $27,000 a kilogram for the space shuttle to take payloads into low Earth orbit. Right now, it's in the ballpark of $1,000 to $2,000 per kilogram using Falcon 9. Starship would get the cost below $10 per kilogram. This is staggering. Let's just use some ballpark numbers. Let's say it's $900,000 and it's 150 tons to orbit, which is a number I have seen before somewhere. That's $6 per kilogram. $6 per kilogram to low Earth orbit. This is the step change. We all thought we were on a curve to lower launch costs. And 40 years from now, a fantasy space elevator was going to bring costs down to around $5 a kilogram. Instead of waiting 40 years, Elon Musk and SpaceX are going to deliver that $6 a kilogram cost next year or the year after. That's how radical this is. It's a 40-year jump ahead in launch costs. So let's have some fun with that. Let's translate this to a real mission that could happen in the next few years. A Mars mission. The current version of Starship is designed for 1,200 tons or 1,200 tons of propellant. In order to go to Mars, a Starship would first fly up into orbit and then be refueled to have that 1,200 tons of fuel filled by tankers. That would be launched up. They would, re they would add 150 tons of fuel at a time to Starship, and they would go back down and another tanker would come up. If Starship tankers are able to come up into low Earth orbit and deliver 150 tons of fuel to the Mars Starship, then it would take a total of nine launches, eight tanker launches and one Mars Starship launch for a total of nine launches. That's the launch cost to send a Starship to Mars. Nine launches at $900,000 a piece is about $8 million. That's $8 million to deliver a 100 passenger starship to the surface of Mars to land on Mars and bring 100 people to Mars. $80,000 a person. The proposed Mars One mission is supposed to save a lot of money and only cost six billion, with a B, six billion dollars to deliver four astronauts to the Martian surface with no way home. And they claim that's far less expensive than other missions that have been proposed. So Starship would cost $80,000 a person to deliver 100 people to the surface of Mars at $80,000 a person. Mars One would cost $6 billion to deliver four people, $80,000 a person or $1.5 billion a person. 
This is a radical, radical difference. This is why Starship matters. Let's try another version of this. What if it was a different Starship configuration? What if instead of carrying 100 people to Mars, we're carrying 150 tons of cargo to the Martian surface? If you want to go far, you put less cargo on, obviously. Like if you want to go really far, you just go like, maybe you have like an 80, 80 ton ship and uh, 40 tons of cargo or something like that. Um, and, and then stretch the tanks to uh, maybe 2,000 tons per pound. Then you, then you can easily go to the surface of Mars and the surface of the moon and back. Yeah, no problem. What if it was a smaller mission with a bigger fuel tank? 40 tons of cargo, or let's say 40 people, and 2,000 tons of propellant. So we're adding a lot of propellant. We're going from 1,200 tons of propellant to 2,000. This could go to Mars and return without having to refuel. Now that 2,000 tons of propellant would take 14 of those tanker launches to fill up the Starship, the Mars Starship. So we're talking about a total of 15 missions and $900,000 a mission. That works out to $13.5 million in launch costs to get 40 people or 40 tons of cargo to Mars and back, a return mission. That works out to about $500,000 per person round trip. A little bit of context here, $13.5 million in launch costs. When a Falcon 9 launch, the commercial price for a Falcon 9 launch is in the ballpark of $60 million. It would cost less launch cost to get 40 people to the surface of Mars and back. It would take a cost a quarter. It would cost, it costs four times as much right now to do a simple Falcon 9 launch with a smaller payload than it would cost in launch costs. And we're only talking about launch costs here. There's other costs I'm going to talk about in a minute. But 13 or 14 or $15 million to get 40 people to the surface of Mars round trip. We could do four Mars round trip missions for the cost of one Falcon 9 launch. Wrap your head around that. Okay, now with all that said, let me bring you back to a little bit of reality. That round trip mission requires a roughly 18 month stay on Mars. The way the planets move around, by the time the ship has landed on Mars, Earth is ahead in its orbit and the Starship would not be able to catch up. So it has to wait until the timing is right for where the planets are going to be in their orbits to come home. So it's not a round trip where you go for a week and you come back. You're stuck there for a while. Most people who know about Mars transport know this is part of the deal. The big thing is this does not include the cost of supporting human life during the trip or on Mars. We're going to need to bring food and water to support human life for the three to six month journey to Mars and for the 18 months that they're going to be on Mars. Now, hopefully there's a plan to develop things on Mars to grow food there. There's going to be ways to extract water from the Martian surface. There's a lot of things going on there. But to be safe, you'd want to make sure they had enough food and water for that entire trip. The three to six months there, the 18 months on the Martian surface, and the three to six months back. So that's additional cost. Substantial additional cost, but it's additional cost. And you need things on the ship to protect the astronauts, the crew, from cosmic radiation. There's a bunch of things you're going to need to make sure that the people are taken care of. If you're just doing cargo missions, that's not an issue. You do a cargo mission, you don't have to worry about the people, you don't have to worry about feeding them. So cargo missions to Mars are going to be amazingly inexpensive. And so you do three cargo missions to bring all the stuff that the 40 people are going to need in their 18 months on Mars and for their return trip and to help set things up on Mars. Now, another thing is this launch cost, this, say, $900,000 launch cost, that's what's known as a marginal cost. There are fixed costs. There's cost of having your spaceport. There's cost of having staff who are running things. There's all kinds of other costs that are in there. There's the cost of building the starships. If you spread those costs over many launches, they become very small costs, and that $900,000 goes to a million, maybe. If you only do a few launches, those, those numbers add up to a lot and you're not saving nearly as much money. Another thing I didn't mention before, it's important to recognize the cost of building Starship is much less than the cost of building Falcon 9 because Starship uses steel. The material that's used to make Falcon 9 costs 40 times as much as the material used to make Starship. So Starship is fairly inexpensive to make. Steel is not that expensive. And the working of steel is not as expensive as the process of building a Falcon 9. 
So even though Starship is much larger, it costs much less to build it. And then if you scale up your method of building it, you're able to achieve economies of scale in building a lot of them, and that saves even more money. Another thing that's going to help spread those fixed costs out is Starlink launches. We're expecting Starship to launch 400 Starlinks at a time with a 40,000 satellite network. That means 100 launches right there. And then every five, the Starlinks have, the Starlink satellites have to re be replaced every five years. So you got to launch about 9,000 of them a year. So there's another 25 launches a year. There's another 20 plus launches a year just in the routine launching additional satellites to fill out the Starlink network. Also, this radical reduction in launch cost per kilogram should greatly increase the number of missions that will come from commercial customers and governments who want things put in orbit for them. If you build it, he will come. On top of that, it makes other missions much easier to do, like missions to Mars, like building a new space station, perhaps, like creating the O'Neill cylinders that Jeff Bezos has been talking about. Rotated to create artificial gravity with centrifugal force. These are very large structures, miles on end, and they hold a million people or more each. All missions like this could help further spread out the cost of the fixed cost of building starships. So that's why Starship matters so much. It's a dramatic reduction in launch cost per kilogram. It's a ridiculous jump. This goes into the category of if you build it, they will come. If you build a low cost way of getting material into orbit, customers will appear and they will make this mission all the more viable. And it's not going to be that long before we're going to see a cargo mission to Mars and then humans traveling to Mars. I think we're talking about four years maybe before we see a cargo mission to Mars and maybe more than one cargo mission. And then another two years, I think we're going to see humans travel to Mars. This is going to be amazing. This is so much fun. Are you excited? Are you, are you having fun? If you like this video, I think you're really going to like this other video I made about Starship and Starlink. Check out my other videos. Please look in the description below for the t-shirts and Patreon. And thank you for watching.